Foot Phantom back. This time we will talk about things that cause pain in the great toe. Here we go. There are various pathology that can cause pain in the great toe. In this particular case, someone can present with very stiff joint, usually hurts with walking uphill. As you can see, there's limited motion along the right great toe. Dorsiflexion, in other words, the upward motion should be approximately 65 to 75 degrees. In this case, on the initial foot, which was the right foot, it was approximately five to seven degrees here. You can see it is pretty much within normal limits. You measure the great toe in regards to the first metatarsal as drawing a straight line. The amount of motion that goes upwards would determine the amount of dorsiflexion from that neutral starting point. Let's take a look underneath and let's see what's going on. As you can see, there is severe unifocal joint space narrowing noted along the big toe joint. As compared to the lesser joint, as you can see here, you can see this dark line. That dark line signifies the amount of cartilage in that joint. On the big toe joint, there is very um, minimal space noted. Let's magnify this area so we can see this a little bit more clearly. As you can see here, there is pretty much bone rubbing on bone. There is no significant thick dark line as uh, we noted on the lesser metatarsals. Here you can see there is a small amount of cartilage still left. The line here appears a little bit darker. Here immediately you see the same. You can also notice that the second metatarsal is very round as compared to the first, which is another radiographic sign of squaring of the first metatarsal consistent with hallux limitus and hallux rigidus. Here on the lateral radiograph, you see the same kind of severe unifocal joint space narrowing uh, along the metatarsal phalangeal joint. You can also notice that the first metatarsal is slightly dorsiflexed as compared to the second metatarsal. This is pretty much the underlying pathology of why this person has uh, this hallux limitus. Um, First metatarsus primus elevatus is the name of it, in which the first metatarsal is dorsiflexed. Here you can see clearly it's pretty much bone rubbing on bone throughout the entire joint. You can also see that the proximal phalanx base has fractured. Um, this is also causing pain and discomfort, I'm sure. Uh, you can see the fracture line here. Let's take a quick look again. There it is. There's also this hook-like uh, dorsal osteophyte or bone spur. Before we discuss treatment options, please don't forget to click the subscribe button below. Excellent. Here we go. There is various types of treatment options from injections, orthotics, surgery, and non-surgical uh, options. Let's talk about an injection. So you can use a local anesthetic with a combination of a steroid, which will significantly assist with overall pain and discomfort initially. It will not directly remove the bone spurs or completely resolve the pain and discomfort, but while the patient is attempting to uh, make a decision on which path they would like to take, uh, and they usually present to the office with severe pain, we want to address this to assist with overall comfort. Everyone has different methods, different regimen, in regards to performing trigger point injections or arthrodesis injections. This depends on the patient. Maybe the patient does not have time to go get an orthotic, does not want any type of surgical intervention. Maybe they don't have the finances to be able to afford any of the above and they just want some temporary relief. This is a time when uh, I personally uh, provide this option to the patients. Usually I will have um, maybe one, two, or three uh, trigger point injections that are spread out over time. 
In regards to surgical intervention, there is various types of surgical techniques depending on the pathology that is found. In regards to an arthroplasty, in which part of the joint is replaced or the entire joint is replaced, is noted above. On number one, majority of radiographic findings would show severe arthritic changes only within the great toe joint. On number two, the majority of the arthritic findings radiographically would be along the proximal phalanx. And of course, when you replace the entire joint, both the proximal phalanx and the first metatarsal head will display severe arthritic changes. This is easily seen once um, you are in uh, the surgical suite and you look at both the articular cartilage along the proximal phalanx and the first metatarsal. I always take into account the patient's level of activity, their age, and what they do for a living in order to help them make a decision on which type of treatment option they need. In this case, an arthrodesis can be performed. Usually I use plate and screw fixation. Sometimes I use an, an additional bone graft if the first uh, ray appears too short as compared to the lesser metatarsal parabola. Sometimes I also use cross screws. Other treatment options include orthotics, which usually can be done with or without surgery. Once again, it depends on the patient's level of activity, their age, their weight, and of course what they do uh, for a living to determine which treatment option you want to proceed with. Uh, impression foam or digital imprint to assist with making the orthotics are options. There are so many other options as well. Once you have these kinds of orthotics, this is not enough. This just provides cushion and some arch support. It will not assist with hallux limitus in this case. What sometimes need to be added to this orthotic once they're made um, on the along the area of the gray toe, there is a modification known as a Morton's extension which is a plate uh, that can be made from metal. Carbon fiber is my choice. That is placed underneath the orthotic. So when the patient ambulates, the great toe does not move, therefore de decreasing the dorsal impingement of the great toe along the area of the bone spur. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe, like, and follow. Foot Phantom out. See you soon.